So, uh, how I often begin shows is by saying that I am not a doctor, although I do play one in the broken dreams of my parents. <laughs> and technically, that's not a joke, but thank you for laughing. <laughs> I open up a little to you, you laugh, and that's why I'm a comedian. <laughs> so, uh, I had a frightening experience yesterday I could tell you about, which is that I was sitting at a cafe, and I noticed in the display case behind me, someone had put pasta and antipasta right next to each other. <laughs> Are they out of their Vulcan minds? <laughs> Um, we're all here, you know, we're, we're all uh, of the same mind in this, is that, you know, I've always been a fan of science and a curious kid, that's what the neighbors said anyway, <laughs> I think they meant well, but, uh, and that's all science is, it's kind of hard to believe, it, we all like science in a way that it's hard to believe other people don't like it as much as we do, because it's just curiosity, right, um, and how can you peer out of those tiny holes in your skull with anything but curiosity. And that's all science is. It's asking really fundamental questions about who we are, where we're going, how much it will cost. <laughs> are, are we going to be expected to tip? These are fundamental <laughs> questions. But uh, once when I was 10, I asked my dad, why is the sky blue? And that seems like a pretty good question for a little 10-year-old scientist. My dad said, uh, go ask your mother. <laughs> so I thought, great, she knows. <clears throat> so I go off in search of my mom. And I felt like I was experiencing the scientific method, you know? I'm, 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 I'm following in the footsteps of Galileo and Newton, and I find my mom, and I say, Mom, why is the sky blue? And I'll never forget her answer, because I said so. <laughs> so at first I was in awe of my mom, later I learned not to trust her in matters of science. <laughs> Maybe she's not the authority. My mom used to tell me to stand up straight. Did you ever get that from your mom? Yeah, pretty common, pretty typical, stand up straight. I think mothers have been telling their kids to stand up straight for longer than we realize. Perhaps even to pre-human days. <laughs> what if that were the driving force behind the ele <laughs> evolutionary trend to walk erect? Mothers nagging their children up the evolutionary ladder. Stand up straight. Don't drag your knuckles when you walk. <laughs> what, are you born in a tree? How many times do I have to tell you? That would be the origin of mathematics. I don't know. <laughs> They say apes are our closest cousins, but we never have them over. That's not cool. <laughs> I finally started reading this being the year of science and being the 150th anniversary of its publication. I finally started reading. I'm almost embarrassed to say I only finally started to read uh, Darwin's The Origin of Species. How, how many people here have read it? Yeah. Don't tell me how it ends. <laughs> I'm kidding. I saw the movie. No. I don't even... Does anyone go to movies anymore? Does... Yeah. Yep. I saw Star Trek. Did you see that one? Yeah. Maybe oh, I'll have yeah. something to say about that in a minute. But uh, <laughs> yeah. But first, this. When we return, um, I saw a movie recently with my friend Chuck. I don't like seeing movies with him because he always has to sit in the front row because he thinks he gets to see the movie before anybody else. <laughs> and you can't argue with him because he always has the same last word. The speed of light is finite, Brian. And it's true. The speed of light is finite, but it's very fast. Anyone? 100, thanks for not going metric, I'm an American. 186,000 miles per second. So if you had a theater, and here's what I told Chuck, if you had a theater 186,000 miles long, you would only see the movie one second before the guy in the last row. And he said, yeah, but you'd hear it a week and a half before him. <laughs> and you probably wouldn't get your popcorn for years. True story. Uh, <laughs> Is that a close I, did, I, I did do the math for that joke, by the way. If some, if some of you are wondering, and very often when I when I have the right crowd, that's such a funny thing. Is I see people, they're not exactly laughing at the joke. They're just, they're I talking. see them trying to make sure the science is accurate. <laughs> and as a comedian, here's something that I, I love, that I've been a comedian for a long time. I was always science geeky. And it took me till just a few years ago to realize I should just focus on that because my favorite jokes... Like that pasta, anti pasta joke, I would tell that. When I wrote it, I thought, hey, anyone would get this. Matter, any matter, Star Trek, the Enterprise runs out. Everyone knows. You tell it at a nightclub, silence, they're waiting for the punchline. <laughs> I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I said, that is the whole joke. And, but one guy is doubled over laughing. He thinks it's the funniest thing he's ever heard. Everyone else is waiting for the punchline. So I was like, I gotta find the right crowd so that I can tell my favorite jokes. And so now what I get, what comics want is laughter. Maybe we want applause. But what I get sometimes, and I've decided this is a great reaction, I've had to decide it's a great reaction, <laughs> is the looking out at the end of the joke and they're going, and you see a bunch of guys going. <laughs> <laughs> they have found.
found the joke sound. <laughs> There's no flaw. <laughs> the joke holds up. And you know what? For that, I go, that's good. That's as good. That's as good as a laugh because they you know, it's like, yes, yes, Power. carry on, comedian. <laughs> that joke is paid. <laughs>